In this video, we show how to translate the uh, context-free grammar for the language L is a set of strings W over alphabet AB, such that the number of A's in the string is less than or equal to the number of B's in the string, which is less than um, or equal to two times the number of A's in the string. Um, and we're going to translate this context-free grammar into a PDA for the language using Lemma 2.21. So first, let's remember what the grammar is. We did it in a previous video. So the grammar looks like this. I think I got it all there. Let's just double check. Yes. Okay. So the first step, so I'm just going to, we're going to build the, um, the PDA here under the grammar. So the first step is to place the bottom of stack marker, which is the dollar sign, as well as the start variable on the stack. We can do this in uh, two steps or we can do it in just one. In the method in SIPSER, our PDA is only going to have three states. So to stick with the method provided there, we're going to do this uh, using one transition. And if you note, um, in SIPSER, he shows how uh, things like when we push two symbols to the stack at a time, uh, this isn't in our original definition of a PDA, but this can be broken out into a series of um, transitions to intermediate states where we push each symbol one at a time. So it, it's uh, convertible to our standard definition of a PDA, and it's kind of just a shorthand. So we're going to use the shorthand. So we're going to start in state Q start. And the first thing we do is we read nothing from either the input or the stack. And then we're going to push the uh, bottom of stack marker and the start variable to the stack. The convention is uh, that we actually push right to left. So here where it says S dollar sign, the S is going to be on the top of the stack. The dollar sign is going to be on the bottom. So pushing goes from, from right to left and then we're gonna end up in state called Q loop. Okay, so that's the transition here. Okay, so that's the first step. So right now our stack has dollar sign on the bottom and then a S on top of that. Okay, next we're supposed to define transitions for the case where the top of the stack contains a variable. Um, so what it says, I'm gonna write it down here and then we can do it and then I'll erase it. Um, it says we define delta on Q loop with uh, reading nothing from the input and when there's an A, a variable on top of the stack, uh, delta there is going to be mapped to the set containing just one item. It's going to go to Q loop and W. And what is W? W is a string, and this corresponds to the rule A goes to W. And R. Okay, so what does this mean? This means um, from the state Q loop, we're going to make a transition by reading no input and popping a variable from the stack. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Q loop, which is why it's named Q loop. It's a loop. Um, and we're going to push a string, okay? And the string corresponds to the string that we create, which is a, uh, could be a mix of variables and terminals um, from the rule in the grammar. Okay, so let me make a loop. We'll see if we can fit them all on here. We might have to make a separate block. So um, we're going to read nothing. And then we read 
a variable or we pop a variable from the top of the stack. Um, notice here the only variable we have is s. So all of these rules are going to be um, by reading nothing and popping s off the stack. Okay, and then we're going to push the string so that the string corresponds to a rule in R. Um, we want to be careful here because remember the convention is that, that um, we're going to push from right to left. So the thing that's leftmost would be on the top of the stack. Um, but that's going to correspond to our rules reading from left to right. Does this make sense? So um, if I wanted to actually follow the rule ASB, I would read the A first if I was going to match um, against that rule. So that's what I want on top of my stack anyway. So this is going to go to the rule um, actually first SS, just to keep these in order. And then here ASB, so the B would get pushed to the bottom of the stack followed by the S and then the A would be on top, so we would read the A first, which is what we want. Um, goes to B, S, A, and I'm just gonna, yeah, we'll just write it out long way. A, S, B, S, B, goes to B, S, B, S, A, goes to B, S, A, S, B, these are getting smaller, I'm sorry, okay, this goes to epsilon, did I get them all? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rules, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven transitions, so I should have them all, and they, hopefully they're correct, okay, so that um, is defining transitions for the case where the top of the stack contains a variable. So this is going to allow us basically to replace a variable with one of these intermediate strings. Okay, so now we need to handle the case where the top of the stack contains a terminal. Okay, and what uh, the method tells us to do is define transitions that look like this. So when we're in Q-loop and we read a terminal uh, from the input, that's what the first one is, and then that same terminal on the top of the stack, meaning we're matching the rules um, against our input that we're actually trying to see if that string is in the language, we're going to go to Q-loop and we're going to put nothing back on the stack. Okay, so really here, uh, variables push things onto the stack, terminals pop them off, okay? So we want um, a transition like this for every uh, terminal in our grammar. So here I read an A. If I have an A on the top of the stack, then I can pop it off and replace it with nothing. Here if I read a B in the input and I have a B on top of my stack, I can pop it off and replace it with nothing. Okay, so that handles that case. So really we've handled almost everything that we need to do to make this PDA recognize the language of the grammar, uh, except we haven't found a way to accept any strings. Well, when do we want to accept strings? We want to accept strings if um, what we've read from the input has allowed us to um, pop off everything that our rules are pushing onto the stack. Okay, so as we read along, if there's a terminal on top, I can read a terminal from the input. If they match, I can pop them, uh, pop the one off the stack that matches the one in my input. And if I have a variable on top of my stack, I can replace that variable on the stack with another rule for my grammar. And this is how we're, we're matching a derivation. So, um, if I get to the place where I have no more input to read, which means I've read all of my string and I have a dollar sign on top of my stack, it means that there is a derivation in the grammar for that string. And in that case, we want to go to the state Q accept, which is going to allow us to accept that string. Okay, and so how do I do that? Um, I want to read no input because I'm done reading input. I want to have a dollar sign on top of my stack and I 
don't need to push anything else to my stack. I just go to Q accept and accept. Okay. So this works. <laughs> so uh, let's try to test it out. Let me make some room. And let's just try a simple string. Let's try uh, the string. So our string is going to be, let's just do a, b. Okay, so we fire up our PDA. We read nothing. Here's going to be our stack. It's going to get messy. <laughs> we'll try to keep it clean, but it's going to get messy. Uh, we push the dollar sign to the bottom. We push the S. Okay, remember this is not deterministic, so it's gonna pick the best choice each time. Okay, and what do we want to do? Um, well, we need, we know uh, by looking at our string that we're gonna end up needing the rule ASB in order to read our string. Non-determinism works in our favor because it's going to choose the one that's gonna work. Um, so we're in the situation where we have a variable on top of our stack. We have an S on top of our stack, which means we have to use one of these transitions. These ones were the ones created for the case where variables on top of the stack. And we wanna make it the case where we're gonna have ASB on the stack. So we're going to take the second transition there, we're gonna pop the S off, um, and we're going to push ASB. And remember, we really push from right to left. So we have B, S, a. Okay, and then now we're back in Q loop. We finished that transition. So now I have a terminal on top of my stack. So I have to use one of these two transitions that uh, allows me, or, or that's, that's created when I have a terminal on top of my stack. It was created for that purpose. So I'm going to use the one that says read an A in the input and pop an A from the stack and push nothing. Okay, so I've done that. I'm um, back in Q loop. I have a variable on top of my stack. So I'm going to, because we know what string we're trying to uh, recognize, I'm going to take the transition that is uh, reads epsilon from the input, right? Because I'm taking transitions that are gonna replace S on my stack. So I'm gonna take the transition here. I'm gonna take uh, epsilon, pop S off the stack and replace it with nothing. All right, so now I have a B on top of my stack. I need to take one of the transitions that allows me to read a terminal. So I'm gonna read B from my input, pop B from my stack, and push nothing. Okay, so I'm back in Q loop. I now have the case where uh, I have a dollar sign on top of my stack. And there's only one transition that I can take with the dollar sign on top of my stack, and it's the one that takes me to Q accept. So we accept the string. Okay, so that's it. So I recommend trying this uh, with some of the more complicated strings um, that make you mix things around. So like A, B, I don't know, uh, A, B, B, maybe try that one, or uh, B, A, B, A, B, and step through it the way we did. So in this case, um, when we had S on top of the stack, instead of replacing with epsilon, which we did because of our simple string, you're going to have to choose another transition to use. Okay?